One of the biggest battles we have on this art journey is the battle that happens in our mind. It's no joke. And the dissertation going on in our heads is often the one thing that prevents us from filling up the white page. So here are five pieces of art advice I wished I'd never heard. And why am I telling you these now? So that when you hear the same advice from someone else, you take it with a big old grain of salt. It's not bad advice necessarily. It's just advice that can lead to more of that gobbledygook going on in your head. Yes, yes, I did just say gobbledygook, so there it is. All right, number one piece of art advice I wished I'd never heard is you have to paint and draw every day to get good. Now, nobody's gonna tell you that painting and drawing or making art every day isn't going to help you potentially. Sure, the more you do, the better you get. Your technique improves, your confidence improves, but when you don't paint or draw or make art on a given day, you don't need to be giving yourself the guilt trips. That's not gonna help anybody. An all or nothing attitude is often what happens when we're developing a new habit. So let me explain you know that you should make art every day. It's gonna make you a better artist. And then you have a day where you just don't have time. Life happens. And then you get into this guilt spiral. Well, I screwed it up. I've screwed up my art journey and I might as well just give it up. Obviously, that's a really extreme example, but friends, you know that this is what happens in our minds when we're developing a new habit. We get really hard on ourselves. And so this kind of art advice that inspires a little bit of an all or nothing thinking, for me, it's just a bad scene. Questionable art advice number two, you should only use the best supplies. Okay, so this ties into number one, because here's the thing, I would rather you use the worst supplies, the stuff that's just sitting next to your hand when you get the itch to create art, like seriously, a ballpoint pen, I don't care. I would rather you create with junk than not create at all. Here's a great example, and it might be a bit of a stretch, but stick with me. Some of the most impactful art throughout history has been done by street artists. Let's take Basquiat, for example. I mean, he just used whatever, and he put it wherever. His art was found in subways, on street signs, and it impacted generations of artists after him. He wasn't really caring about the like high brownness of his supplies. No, he had something to say and he needed to say it however it came to be. Rest in peace, dear soul. Okay, questionable art advice number three, and it ties into number two. You see a pattern here? You need to be an art history expert. Uh, a no. I got this advice in college and it was from an art history teacher, so I should have known that the advice was shady, but the thing is, I've always hated art history presented in a traditional way. And it kind of left a bad taste in my mouth for art history in general. And eventually I learned how I prefer to digest that kind of information. But you've got to get off the guilt train when it comes to being an expert on art history. Because interest begets interest. Let me explain. In high school, I fell in love with Georgia O'Keeffe. And I really didn't care to know much about her life as an artist. I just really loved looking at her art. But as I grew in my art journey, I wanted to find out more about the human being behind these incredible masterpieces. And so my original interest in her art actually inspired me to research her and learn more about her own art history as an artist. And so that's what I mean by let the interest beget the future interest. Don't worry about what you should be learning, how you should be learning it, and how quickly you should be learning it. Just let it flow naturally. And I'm all for building new habits that can really inspire our art journey and feed our art journey. So if you feel like you wanna challenge yourself to develop a love of art history, then start in small doses. Watch a quick documentary or read a few pages of an art book that really interests you every night but don't go crazy and don't feel like you have to be all in to be worthy. Friends, head into the comments section now if you've been given some questionable art advice that made for some less than desirable habits along your art journey. I cannot wait to hear them. Sketchy art advice number four. Drawing is a fundamental skill for any good artist. Okay, I could get real spicy up in here right now, so I will try to hold myself back. Here's the thing, friends, 
You don't have to be good at drawing or illustrating to have a successful art journey. Should I say that again? I don't think I need to. Seriously though, absolutely learning to draw and being confident in your illustration skills can certainly inspire your watercolor artwork. It can uplift what you do along this watercolor adventure. Absolutely. But is it a requirement to be any good at it? Absolutely not. And this goes back to joy, because remember, we're joy chasers here. We're not necessarily talking about making a career out of this and becoming the most realist artist that there is and all, yeah, no, that's not what we're doing here. We're chasing the joy here. Watercolor is our path to unlimited joy. And so why does drawing have any bearings on that adventure? It doesn't. So you don't like to draw? You don't care to invest time in it? Don't. Trace your heart out, friends, do it. I have a video I'm gonna link below that outlines all my thoughts on tracing and why it's a good thing. All right, friends, let me know, are you feeling all the feels right now? Have I given you some kind of permission that you were waiting for? Let me know, head into comments, let's have a conversation. This community is flipping awesome and I love the talks. I adore the talks that happen in the comment section, so let's do it. All right, and also, if you have a moment and you feel so compelled, I'd love for you to give this video a boop. That's a like, it really helps out my channel. And the fifth bit of art advice I wish I'd listened to less. Focus on one art medium at a time before you move on to another. Let me tell you what, I would never be the artist that I am today. And like, you know, what level of artist I am is up for debate, but let's just assume I'm doing okay. If I had only focused on watercolor for as long as I thought it would take me to become an expert in watercolor. Working back and forth between mediums during my watercolor journey, especially early in my formative years of learning watercolor made me a better watercolorist. Let me explain. When you learn the limits of one medium and then another and then another, you actually become more aware of what each medium can do and which medium is better for you as an artist. You develop your style and dare I say your skill a lot quicker than if you had just focused on that one medium. But listen, if you're getting your joy from going all in on one medium, then stay there. But I just don't want you to feel like you have to. Now, speaking of developing your personal art style, there are a few things you can do to develop that style a lot quicker. So watch this video next and find out all about it. Until next time, friends, happy painting.